So in this video, I want to study the effects that financial liberalization has on financial markets. And I'm going to go over a paper from Brona Aventura of last year. So the question they ask is, what happens when countries liberalize, when countries open their borders to uh, financial transactions from abroad? Well, the conventional view has it that this will lead to really good outcomes. The country will receive a lot of capital inflows from abroad, and this will help the country insure against um, aggregate risk and reduce volatility. But in reality, this is not what is seen in the data. When countries liberalize, sometimes we see um, domestic capital flights and increases in volatility that mean that uh, domestic markets become more fragile after the opening. So why is this the case? Well, they argue that um, this conventional view failed to anticipate the effects that opening up would have on debt enforcement and that some countries would end up wanting to discriminate against foreign investors if the institutional framework is not too solid, producing a very high risk of default. Okay, so imagine we have, you know, two types of investors. We have foreign investors and domestic investors. The domestic guy is just maximizing his lifetime utility. And when the economy is closed, he's just consuming a, a fraction of his wages and he's saving the other. The savings, of course, go into capital. When he's sold, he consumes the returns that that capital gives him. Of course, as we usually assume, um, this wage is just going to be the marginal product of labor and uh, the interest rate on the capital is just going to be the marginal product of capital. Thus, in this closed economy, we will end up having um, this low motion for the capital stock, which means that, that the country uh, just saves a constant fraction of, uh, of, the, of the country's income. Now, imagine that we liberalize um, the financial markets and we open up the economy. That is, we allow citizens, the domestic guys, to participate in international uh, financial markets. If the savings of the country are really high, we'll end up lending to the rest of the world. That means that we will be buying the bonds that um, the foreigners issue. And we will receive a fixed rate that is just equal to one, the lending rate, that um, international financial markets require. But then there is the other case in which we need money. So what we can do is we can borrow from abroad. We issue some bonds and we sell them to, uh, to foreigners. And that is how we finance uh, ourselves. Now, if we borrow, it ends up happening that uh, the rate at which we borrow is a little higher than the rate we will be getting if we lend it. So why do we have to pay more um, if we borrow money than what we would receive if we were lending money? Basically because there is a risk that we are not solvent and that we, uh, we end up defaulting. You know, if this wasn't true, if we always repay our debts, both the lending and, uh, and the borrowing rate would be equal. But since there is a possibility that we default, we have to pay more if we want to get money. Now, imagine there are two cases. On the one hand, governments can force and uh, force their citizens to pay back foreigners. And in the other case, governments cannot enforce and uh, will not um, have citizens pay back the debt to foreigners. Obviously, the higher the probability of enforcement, um, the lower the interest rate we will have to pay for borrowing money from abroad because we will be seen as less risky. And this is why the borrowing rate takes this, takes this form. Basically, if the probability that uh, we will pay back the debts was, was one, then we will just be um, borrowing at, a, at the same rate as the lending rate. But if there is a slightest chance that uh, this probability is less than one, then we would have to borrow at a higher interest rate. And this is where the quality of uh, the institutions of the country that is borrowing starts to matter. Imagine that with probability pi, 
institutions are good and always succeed in making uh, debts paid back. And with probability 1 minus pi, these institutions fail and governments are free to choose whether they want to enforce or not enforce. So basically, since defaulting, not enforcing, results in higher welfare for the country, whenever institution fails, there will be a default. This simplifies our analysis since the probability of um, enforcement is just the probability that institutions are good. Now, countries with bad institutions, with low pies, uh, will need to pay a higher um, premium for borrowing. And this is why the higher the pie, the lower the borrowing rate. I will continue in the next video.